IPL 5 qualifiers, we're heading now into Game 1, Team Dynamic versus Team Kevin is a Noob. Team Dynamic, they've got the option, they're taking first ban, first pick, and Shen will be the first one banned out. Yeah, and I mean, he can be just really devastating in that top lane. Um, I don't know, it's interesting, I, I'd like to see what Zion Spartan tries to do, uh, to do against Shen, you know, leave him open, mm -hmm. uh, but even so, it's a safe pick. Banning Mundo, obviously, uh, is just one of those strong junglers. I haven't really seen Nintendo play a lot of Mundo. He tends to like more aggressive yeah. uh, junglers that, well, you know, pick up kills, those physical damage junglers, but he's still obviously very strong. Well, I mean, if we actually look back to their uh, round of 32 match against Mendig Elo, uh, Dynamic was actually the one on the end banning Mundo. So it looks, it seems that, uh, it, it seems that Kevin's noob actually kind of made like a mutual ban. It's like, you know what, we all hate Mundo. We, you know, let's just let's just put it out there, let's just get rid of him. Because it, it seems to be, you know, Mundo's one of Dynamic's more common bans. So now I think they're kind of uh, trying to get a feel out for it's like, okay, let's ban Mundo, let's see who else they ban. Let's see what kind of team comp or strategy they may be going for. Leeson, Soraka, the next two set of bans. Uh, we've seen Lulu banned from Dynamic before. We've seen Varus banned from Dynamic before. We've seen Leona and Morgana banned from Dynamic before very recently. So, I don't know. We will, we will see. We will see. Yeah, and right now, you know, just kind of standard bans. Lee Sin, um, I don't know. I was kind of thinking with first pick that could be, you know, something that you could easily counter out. I don't know, you know, what each of these players tends to play. But, uh, you know, obviously just very safe kind of standard bans that lanes that do well against all lanes. And yeah. so Team Dynamic, maybe if they can force them into a situation that they're not that comfortable with, we can see what they can do. We obviously saw at IPL4 how strong of an AD carry, uh, you know, Zig was. Um, he played a lot of Kog'Maw, was very successful with it for a number of games. But uh, banning out Kog'Ma, and so we'll, you know, fall back to like a Corky or something. Yep. Uh, we'll have to see. And Riven will go ahead and be the last ban for Kevin as a noob. Sorry, Christina, but uh, you know, sometimes you know, some some teams just don't like playing against Riven. But Janna will be the first pick for Team Dynamic. They want to get that support. They want to secure Janna for what they're trying to do, or to be the good at disengage. And we see a uh, Udir a potential here for Kevin. Yeah, and so having that Janna gives you that kind of mobility. We saw that in game number one with CLG. But the big thing is it also gives your jungler a lot of mobility. So if you're looking for ganks uh, or primarily counter jungling, you're going to be able to move all over the map and have a lot of map control. Having Udir definitely works well against that because Udir obviously can go either top or in the jungle and will have plenty of map control as well if he's the jungler because of his speed and his ganking presence. And also thinking about Tarek. Yes, Tarek will be the support here. For Kevin is a noob, and you see, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of aggression coming in, you know, from this bot lane. So we maybe see uh, we may see him paired up with a very aggressive bot like Vayne even. But uh, Urgot has escaped the bands, and now we will actually see Dynamic secure him. And you know, he's going to be doing a lot of damage, bot lane, especially when he have the Janna shield on him. He's going to be in the back. It's going to be very hard for for Kevin to try and pop the shield because he's going to be firing away at such a range and that's a lot of extra damage that you really, really don't want to be dealing with. Yeah, and it is a very aggressive lane. Urgot can be very tanky early in the game. So if you pair a tanky team with Urgot, then uh, very quickly you can shut down the enemy AD carry. You can pick up kills in fights and then just become unstoppable. Uh, that is going to be something that they're going to have to work out, you know, between them. But uh, we'll have to see, you know, how it works out for him. Picking up the Olaf pick is a very common pick that we've seen oh, from yeah. Nintendo a number of times, but can also go in that top lane. And so a lot of it depends on what Udyr's looking to do. It gives them that versatility as well. Olaf actually does decently against Udyr. Um, you know, he does have the true damage, which uh, is pretty nice in the spam ability as well as the regen. But uh, Udyr is just such a strong laner. It is a pretty even matchup. So we'll see if it, you know, changes for another laner, then all of a sudden Nintendo can decide, okay, well, I'm going to jungle, which is probably what they're going to be looking to do. No. Bad. No. <laughs> uh, we do have uh, the Sivir pick uh, being picked up here for Kevin, and I do, I really like this. Sivir pairs up very well with Tarek, because if you get the Tarek stun off someone, that's pretty much guaranteeing both hits of the Boomerang Blade to proc. And yeah, it's, it's a very good call, and we also have a little bit extra armor on Sivir, and Spell Shield against someone who relies a lot on, you know, getting your abilities off, like Urgot. Mm -hmm really enjoy that pick and I was and you know one of Sivir's main problems bot lane very early on early on is a lack of mana sometimes you see that no bad bad stop the 
But we actually a lot you have a lot of issues with mana. Sometimes you see Sivir paired up with a Soraka, but if you're up against someone who fires off abilities quite frequently, the spell shield is there, regen your mana, and you can go ahead and fix that. Yeah, but you know, right now we do see we are going to be sending Jax top. So now this is kind of interesting. We're going to have Kennen in that top lane versus Jax, and uh, Jax doesn't have any innate regen early on, so that's going to be a concern for him when you consider the constant harass that Kennen is going to be doing. But Kennen will provide them with nice fight control. Uh, you know, has that nice AOE, and then obviously Jax on the other side has a lot of burst damage, so he can you know potentially burst down Kennen. Um, and then as the game progresses, be, you know, really tanky kind of bruiser. So we have uh, right now three champions for Team Dynamic that are, you know, extremely tanky and can be right up kind of in your face, Olaf, Jax, and uh, Urgot. And the fact that Urgot scales, or Jax scales incredibly well into late game uh, and is that kind of late hyper carry, whereas Urgot isn't. So it, it kind of counterbalances itself. And then they have Morgana to give them a nice little team balance, give them that great team fight potential, and then give the shields to allow them to, you know, be a little bit more aggressive and allow Jax to just be so strong in these fights. On the other side, we have a double AP comp with Kennen and with Karthus. So that's going to be a really aggressive AoE. Lots of kill potential. And then you follow up that AoE with uh, ah. Sivir. So actually, switching to Ari, Ari works very well with this comp as well. So you have Kennen for the fight control, and Ari for the early kills, and for picking off champions. And also think about this too, because we have Kennen and we have Ari, two very mobile APs already. We got Kennen, we got the Lightning Rush, and we got Ari there we, with the ultimate. Pair that up with the ultimate from Sivir. That's even more movement speed. So let's say we have a we have an instance where Kennen we got you know gets in there with the ult and everyone's trying to retreat away. Sivir, ult, mm. movement speed, go! And we can actually still connect with that initiation. Yeah, I mean, but one of the concerns that um sorry, Kevin is a noob is going to have to consider is the fact that Janna has the disengage uh, can very easily you know, just say, we're not going to fight. I'm we're, I am not clicking accept on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's done. I already hit accept. No. So no. Janna uh, has the disengage for the fights. Morgana, you know, obviously she has her ultimate and whatnot, will be very strong in that sense. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see. But there is really strong late game for Team Dynamic. And then really strong late game as well for Kevin is a noob. But Kevin is a noob has a little bit more of a uh, mobility advantage, has, you know, a really strong early team fights um, and a little bit more late game AD presence with Sivir versus that Urgot. Yep. I'm just I'm hoping that uh, V team can actually get those spell shields off because mm -hmm. if we yeah, don't easily yeah. block Urgot. Yeah, we can easily block Urgot if we get them timed correctly. One missed spell shield can really just put Sivir at a huge disadvantage lane and be enough to push her back to tower or even worse, push her back to base, allowing Urgot to just go ahead and free farm. Yeah, I mean, though I would say generally Sivir is pretty safe in lane against Urgot, and that's yeah. one of the things you look at Sivir as is the counter to Urgot. Um, you know, so that is a concern. But, it, you know, obviously the spell shield is on a very long... No, actually, the, we just have one friend request for tonight. The spell shield is on a long <laughs> cooldown. Um, the spe spell shield this, is, this is on a is, long cooldown. This cool is down, my then, account. This is your account. I know this is it my is your account. account. Uh, the spell shield is on a, on a long cooldown, and if they can, if Urgot can bait out that cooldown, then all of a sudden Sivir is going to be vulnerable to, you know, say the ultimate or any of her abilities. And that's something to consider also that the Urgot ultimate is instant. So yes. you can anticipate the ultimate. Like if Urgot flashes into you, then very obviously there's going to be a short period of time where you can decide, oh, you know, hey, let's let's hold on a second here. Let's think things over. I've got my spell shield. Let me pop that up. But if Sivir is just in range of Urgot, then it is instant, and that will be very difficult to block. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see how it works out for him. But uh, <laughs> having, having all the disables, they have, you know, plenty of uh, team fighting potential. Um, a lot of it's going to come down to the early game. And so early game, who's going to be able to get an early advantage? Well, uh, Urgot is obviously, you know, very strong for picking up kills. Morgana is very strong for picking up kill early kills. Ari, on the other hand, is also very strong. So it's Urgot and Morgana versus Ari, kind of, for who can snowball their team the fastest. Kennen versus uh, Jax um, should be a pretty interesting top lane, since, you know, Kennen can get in that ranged harass against Jax, but Jax still has a lot of burst damage. Now he's actually going with the Ignite, so Ignite versus Ignite. We we have a ton of Ignites in this game so far. Yeah, we lots of... I guess that's a pretty standard amount. For a second, yeah. Janna had the Ignite, I thought, but... Um, I, mean, it's, I, still, I mean, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent amount, and have three members of Kevin have it. You know, it's, They're really looking to try and get those kills early on. And, but it's, I'm still... I, 
<laughs> you know, I'm too distracted by his friend request, man. Uh, <laughs> damn it. I, okay, you know what? Story time. Real quick story time. Right. Uh, real Way back when we were doing Killing Spree, uh, one of the guys is actually uh, um, also one of our volunteers here at IPL, a very good friend of mine, a very good friend of a lot of here, uh, Strato. Uh, he, the, like, right when we were start, you know, first starting off Killing Spree, we did have a lot of big names. And there were like a few nights when we were running it because we were using my account. And there would be nights, like I, like the, the following day, I would have to take like a half hour out of my day just denying oh, friend requests. Like, like we're talking like 250 friend requests like at a time and our good buddy strato made the mistake of messaging me while we were doing champs like for one of these matches and he messaged me later on that night and said i will never message you ever again would you like to know why yes i do because right after i messaged you while you were streaming i think over that night over the next five minutes, I think I got somewhere and denied somewhere around the area of over 700 friend requests. And, yeah, that sounds pretty and good. And that's, yeah, see, that's, that's still, uh, that's a... Uh, he's a popular guy. He's a popular know. guy. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes, but <laughs> it's, 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 hey, you know, like I said, like I said before, live environment, we got to bring these games to you live. You know, there's, in my mind, there's really no other way, and... But funny, funny stuff does indeed happen. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's a good night. We're having a good time. Game one, Team Dynamic versus Kevin is a noob. Lil Kevin. Lil Kevin. I'm excited to see. I'm, I'm a very big fan of Sivir. I'm excited to see how we're going to match up here against Urgot. Hoping you can get the spells. Hoping, hoping you're a little bit better at you know getting those spell shields on her than I am because I miss those all the time but it could actually make or break bot lane yeah and i'm, I'm kind of curious you know top lane honestly is the one that interests me the most for how that's going to match up i think bottom lane is primarily just going to be a safe defensive lane because mm -hmm. Sivir and Tarek have enough heals and have enough survivability they should be fine uh, but top lane, you know, the burst of Jax versus the, you know, sustained harass of Kennen. And I think a lot of that comes down to skill. We do see a hard engage here. Oh, There's wow. the ward from Terex, so they will be safe. They know, okay, they're at our blue. Well, let's, you know, try and think of what we're going to do now. But uh, one of the concerns, you know, for um, Team Dynamic is the fact that they use Olaf as an aggressive jungler. However, against Kennen, it's going to be very difficult for him to get kills. Against Ari, it's going to be very difficult for him to get kills. Against bot bottom lane as well, unless we get the swap off. Once we get the swap, then obviously that's going to be easy. But uh, Olaf isn't one of those junglers who can gank Kennen. There's a couple of junglers who do very well against Kennen, but Olaf, it's pretty easy to dodge that first axe. If you dodge it, then, you know, all of a sudden the gank, it's, it's basically worthless. Um, so, you know, Kennen will be pretty safe up there, and if Kennen can control the lane, maybe shut down Zion Spartan a little bit, then, you know, we'll see how that uh, mid-game teamfight control with Kennen and Ari works out for them. So we hear, we see Deathmonger starting out on the raid, is going to be moving on to red very shortly on from that, and, you know, we've seen Nintendo play Olaf, I think, quite nearly the majority of the time he's ever been on our stream. It's always a joy to see him play that. But uh, we have also seen in the past that you know sometimes Nintendo can get a little bit uh, a little bit of ahead of himself playing that Olaf, and you know we've seen uh, we we've seen quite a bit of suicides you know on his part as well. So I'd like to see how his Olaf has uh, has improved since we've uh, seen them last at IPL four, and it's gonna be a good opportunity for that here. Top lane, we do have Jax and Kennen duking it out, so it's gonna be a little bit of a range for us from uh, from Kennen. Zion's gonna have a little bit of a time you know working up that, but he does have the burst to retaliate and. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the lane I'm going to be looking at, Sivir versus Orgot. Yeah. And uh, again, the concern top is that, you know, if Jax tries to run into Kennen, if Kennen keeps up two procs, then really quickly you throw a Shurik into the face, you get that stun off, you mm -hmm. exchange damage very well. Jax, on the other hand, has his own built-in stun. He's going to, you know, throw the leap strike off, try and get that stun, and try and engage. We see actually Nintendo Ooh. coming in, and the ward spotted him, Here's so the, he came down, he wants to go in for these wolves, and they know where he is. Uh, a little bit of a miss-up, because he went, he got in vision of the area, and they, they had quite possibly a feeling that it could have been warded, but here's the worst part now. We got Sivir, we're here with the Boomerang Blade, and we got Tarek and Nintendo. You are trapped. The first blood going to Ari and giving up the blue, but we have the binding. Urgot is here. Can we get the damage we need to? Yes, we can. Blue being passed from, <laughs> from off over 
to Ari, now over to Paradoxical. How about that? Yeah, and so that's interesting. That actually kind of that actually <laughs> it worked, worked out to their benefit. It, it, it so worked, now, yeah, Paradoxical is far farther ahead. Particularly if she gets the kill here, Deathmonger probably won't go down. Ignite um, is down. Yeah, so there's no ignite. But uh, Paradoxical probably could have just gone mid and tried to deny Ari some experience. And so Paradoxical has the early level advantage and has the blue for sustainability. Even though we see the quick Doran's blade onto Ari, uh, Paradoxical, you know, will have one of her uh, of his own and then will be very fine in that lane. So um, really a big misstep by Nintendo, but it is going to work out. I'm a little bit surprised what he was thinking was going to happen. Uh, you know, stealing the wolves would have been nice, but I don't know. There's not really a big threat there. He is coming in for this blue, though, and because it's four minutes in, they know they s there was a ward there earlier, but four minutes in, if, it, if the ward was placed, it was probably placed at the beginning of the game, which means that the ward would be down, and so they are safe to come up and take this blue. Um, and then, you know, get out of there. So we actually see a bind onto Ari as well. Some nice damage mid. And that's what you have to fear with that blue buff Morgana. She can constantly spam out those abilities. And now that Deathmonger made his way down, like, just you know, j just in time to see it go. Realize, like, okay, we've been counter jungled. Our blue is gone. We're going to be at a further disadvantage. Our, you know, Ari's going to have a much rougher time. We don't have the mana regen, but we also have the timer. So that thing's going to be back up around the nine minute mark. So we got to t keep tabs on that. Other, you know, considering that, you know, the blue on the uh, dynamic side is going to be up at seven minutes. So we can go back in, get secure our blue when it comes back up. Morgana can make some pretty good use out of it. And hey, Morgana, your blue buff is about to go. How would you like to go ahead and grab Kevin's blue buff? Sounds pretty good, and we can go ahead and we can actually keep chaining blue buffs on Morgana if Dynamic is wily enough. But Udir is coming in on Paradoxical here. We do have the yep. shield, so we will be fine. And the issue is Ari is so low that even if Udir comes in, there's not a whole lot of kill potential there. Um, he can, you know, doesn't get the snare, nope. uh, but you know, even so, lane, it's not that big of a deal. And Nintendo coming in on Kennen. Nintendo coming in here. We got the lightning rush away. Kennen, we might be able to get some uh, distance here, but Zion Spartan is a little bit too far out and also very low on mana, but we still managed to wow. burn the flash. That hey, was probably not necessary. I, you know what? No, I think it, I think it was because Zion Spartan, I think we're just almost about within leap strike range, but I think we're just trying to, we just want to make sure, we want to ensure right. our safety. And, you know, it's. Yeah, That's better, true. Safe, better safe than sorry. Better if safe Jax than sorry. had flashed in for the leap strike with the ignite all at once, that. then that would have been a lot of burst, and that would have shut him down in lane. But you see, it's kind of interesting. Ooh, the nice little shield there. It's kind of interesting in this lane. Uh, Saber actually getting a really nice chunk onto Janna. Now Zig is right in the middle of the team. We actually have the exhaust going off, so a nice little damage exchange. Zig maybe going to uh, turn around, actually just going to get out of there. We had the exhaust on Sivir as well. So, you know, in the head-to-head -head fight with that heal from Tarek, they actually win, you know, a little bit. So maybe even when Zig gets off his, uh, you know, Acid Hunter, gets off that lock on, he can just back off. Oh, no. um, in the meantime, Nintendo actually diving for <laughs> little Kevin, not quite able to get that kill, but he is just being extremely aggressive this game. He just wants kills left and right, chasing after Deathmonger here. Yeah. Uh, will be fine, though. Yeah, Nintendo's just, you know, he's taking this advantage. Now, he does have a double buff. So he's just trying to make the best of his situation here. So we're trying, you know, we're trying to hunt out kills. This is what Nintendo does. He gets incredibly aggressive, and especially on Olaf, like this is the champ. This is his guy. This is his specialty. This is what he knows, and this is what he's, you know, he's going to keep on pressing the issue while he still is in a position to do so. But you know, we were up too. F yeah, but we have a little bit of a risky situation here. He's getting way too far up into enemy territory. We saw him actually go in between two towers just to try and get an axe onto Ari. Just to try and you know delay the backing. Udir was there. I mean, if if we had Sivir nearby, if we had Terran nearby, we could have seen Nintendo actually die once more. This time, giving up double buff. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I, I think Nintendo needs to sit back a little while. Possibly, we could make a lot more attempts on the top lane because Red Yoron is getting, once again, a little bit more aggressive trying to push in on Zion Spartan. And Zion Spartan, he decided to go back and he's back full up on mana. And he's there. He can contribute once again. Flash and Ignite are still up, but we see Deathmonger now trying to get in. We got the ult coming in. Zion Spartan, he pops the ult for the extra amount of defense. Flashes away. He is ignited, but can we get the last bit of damage we need? The Ignite's going down. Deathmonger is tanking that turret. Oh, no. We're very low. He's we got the pick stun. Up the double. No. Oh, we got it. Nintendo comes in and gets the last little bit of damage we need here onto Red Yoron. But uh, little Kevin was trying to come on up to get a little bit of an assist here. And yeah, Paradox was just pushing her away.
Yeah, and so the hard dive onto Jax. Jax was able to get the dodge up once again. Once yep. the dodge is up, you just cannot <laughs> dive, Jax. Um, so really successful play there. But you saw, you know, Jax has a nice little chunk of burst. And so yeah, even though Kennen has been winning the damage exchange so far, Jax was able to leap strike, get some damage, but it did kind of bait himself into that fight where, you know, he's out of position. They can get the stun. Oh, we have the snare going off on the Ari, though. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't go in for the ult. He oh. still didn't use it. Wow. That's a... So he actually, he yeah. had the instant kill if he just used the ultimate. Would have been dead. Thought that the um, Ignite should have maybe been able to take it down, and so he burned his flash without picking up the kill, which is a little bit surprising, but... Even so, he's got complete control over that mid lane. He's going to have a yeah. two-level advantage once he pushes those creeps underneath the tower. A little bit of a misstep. I mean, we didn't use the ult. We didn't get the kill. But we still managed to force little Kevin out of lane. There's still more time for Paradise to stay in lane. Still extremely healthy. Can just go ahead, passively farm, push minions up to the tower, and deny a little bit of stuff from little Kevin. But Pixel now actually being focused down a little bit too hard here. Bot lane is ignited. Trying to get out. And once again, Zig is out in front to try and dissuade. You know, you know Kevin is a noob. And you know, it's, we're seeing a lot of focus coming down on the Pixel. Yeah, and it's just so much burst from Sivir. I think I, I honestly forgot how strong her burst is. <laughs> she is pretty um, bursty, yeah, man. Yeah, she's got the auto attack reset with her W and then follow it up with the Q. Nintendo going to try and steal this. Mm. He does get this. No, it, it's actually still no. alive. I, the Golem disappeared for a second. I was confused. But he's actually being chased down by Ari. Has the life steal. Ghost Ari going to back, back off for a second. Tarek coming in here as well. There's the snare, but he's going down. And Sivir has the red buff chasing after Paradoxical actually doesn't block it so the spell shield doesn't block it um after you know you get the first engage uh you can only block the first proc but uh paradoxical going to get out of there so olaf going down once again just mm -hmm. running around with reckless abandon uh not quite able to make it work for him as he this is my worry this is my big worry that i stayed in you know before with nintendo he got way too far in enemy territory got caught out and see this time we had Sivir and Tarek to back us up you know, just goes in. He's just he's giving away kills. He can't be doing that, man. Just cannot be doing it. But Paradoxical is here trying to get aggressive here. We could actually get something here on Deathmonger, but ult was down. We used it earlier just to, you know, try and get away from that 3-4v1 situation we had earlier. But we do have Urgot coming up. Zig is here. Can we get some extra damage we need onto Tarek? We get him and push away. And uh, we may actually see this blue passed onto Urgot. Yeah, and so and if our Morgana, you know, the blue is out. Morgana could take it. Urgot having it would be nice. So Urgot actually takes mm -hmm. it. They wanted it to be on Morgana, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So Morgana would have the control mid. Uh, you saw Morgana missing the snare last second there trying to take it. So maybe Zig was like, no, I want it. It's mine. But <laughs> uh, even so, it. It, it will be n very nice on Urgot, you know, to have that kind of spammability, the cooldown reduction. So if Sivir blocks one spell shield, then obviously the next, uh, you know, E, you can hit it and the spell shield won't be up because the cooldown uh, for Urgot's E is much shorter than the spell shield. So, you know, we'll be fine there getting the dragon, getting some experience. But in the meantime, Zion Spartan, you know, kind of falling a little bit behind Kennen. Um, actually doing a pretty good job of keeping up. I, I stand corrected, looking yep. down at the scoreboard. But uh, he will have the wave push up to him. We'll be fine. Oh, actually, there's the snare. There's there the ultimate there's and the, the ult ignite. This time we should secure it now. There we go. That's what should have happened <coughs> a few minutes ago. And that's just going to be such a concern for Ari. Normally you would say that Ari w works very well as like a counter to Morgana uh, because of just the survivability you have. But just to go down like that is really devastating. And now Jack's starting to be the aggressor in the top lane. Like we said, has that burst, can throw off the stun, get out of there. The concern is that he doesn't have the same mana pool as uh, Kennen, obviously, which, since which, Kennen yeah, which doesn't Kennen has have a none. mana pool. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so that, you know, obviously as the lane progresses, he's going to wear himself more and more down, but he is going for a kind of bursty build as opposed to, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of um, Jaxes go for that quick Triforce. See, now I'm, I'm now even more liking the pass of the blue onto Zig. We had a realization, you know, Paradox will be like, you know what, I'm winning mid pretty well. Like, look at this, I can kill Ari pretty convincingly, mm -hmm. and the creep score is actually nearly doubled for Morgana over Ari. But when we cast the blue buff onto Zig, his mana pool was ridiculously low. He would have had to back in order to recoup the mana and come back and remain in lane. But because he was able to stay, now we have a level advantage over V-Teen, over Sivir. And we can stay and we can continue to stay in lane while we still have the blue buff. And if we continue to keep passing it over to him, he doesn't have to go ahead and buy mana items such as tier, which would eventually be in the main menu. You can just start building pure damage.
Yeah, and just barely missing that snare from Morgana into Ari. No fear, Nintendo walking right up into Ari, <laughs> but not that big of a deal. He's got Paradoxical to back him up. And actually, there's mm. another snare, so unfortunately, that does miss as well. But that's the concern for Ari now, the fact that, you know, her ult, she doesn't want to be using it to just dodge every snare. And if she doesn't dodge one of these snares, then all of a sudden, she gets bursted down, and she's like, well, that sucks. I just screwed up there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so we see, you know, Jax and Olaf pressuring this mid. Actually, the flash Ooh. into the stun, so they get the stun. The oh. snare dodged from Ari, so just barely able to get out of there. That was a good money ult to get away from that one, but we see Zion Spartan now go playing the roaming game. But since we did not connect on that kill, Redioron has a little bit of time to free farm up top lane. But right now, this part of the game, Dynamic winning mid pretty convincingly. Dynamic winning bot pretty convincingly and pushing very effectively as well. Top is still a contested area. And if we see uh, Zion Spartan roam a little bit more, we may just end up giving top lane to Kennen, which for the time being now, in terms of gold and you know like global advantage, we can take down all these towers. It's good for now. But we really, really do not want to be seeing Kennen very well farmed. If he manages to get the Zonias, team fights is going to be that much harder to take him down later on. But we do have Paradoxical coming up here. They, uh, Kennen did see him coming up, and there he does see him in the ward, so he will be safe. It is generally a pretty safe lane. It does give Jax an opportunity to farm, so Jax actually out-farming Kennen now, so he's got the burst. He is kind of low here. Kennen getting some nice range harassed. Yep. I don't know if Kennen has enough sustained damage. With the Ignite, he probably does with the ultimate. Uh, but even so, he doesn't want to press it in case a gank's coming like the one we do see here <laughs> as Paradoxical coming once again into this top lane. I mean, that we, they must know right by now that that Tribush is ward based on the actions. Oh, of almost getting the snare. Uh, Paradoxical is like, you know, we had you know, but, you know, we had all those money snares earlier. They're already paying off for themselves. Nintendo now doing out a little bit with little Kevin in mid. Little Kevin, the very low, is just going to have to uh, farm up just a little bit, keep him at bay, clear those creeps. But now we have a 2v1 push here. Top lane, Zion Spartan and Paradoxal are trying to look. They want to get that kill. Ken is now retreating forward. We get the stun. We get the bind. He's rooted. He's standing still. And now Morgana will be able to finish him off. Yes, but you are still ignited. Can you get away? Last tick does get the shutdown. On to Morgana. Yeah, just taking a little bit too long. Kennen yep. is pretty safe in lane, and with that ultimate, obviously the stun is very strong. Um, but, you know, even so, it gives Jax an opportunity to just continue pressing the advantage. He will be chased out a little bit by Udyr. Udyr doesn't want him uh, to allow him to farm there, uh, and will be pushing into the tower. So, you know, still going to be pretty even, though Team Dynamic getting a slight gold advantage with their nice little farm lead. They are winning both... Um, mid and top as far as farm is concerned. And, and bot as well. I mean, look at Urgot, 127 oh, yeah. to Sippers, 105. And they can just go ahead and push like East. If they're not, it, it, he's been doing a pretty good job of just straight out free farming as well. Sipper is unfortunately not able to get close enough to deal any harass damage or even really get any farm in. We can't, we can't even farm with our boomerang blade right now. That's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, and that that's, is kind of interesting how that dynamic has changed since Sivir yeah. and Carrick were so aggressive early on. Now they know how much burst damage Urgot has. Um, you know, he did hit level 9. Obviously, he's got the Glacial Shroud for that cooldown reduction. It is going to be very difficult to duel uh, with Sivir. Just can't, you know, auto-attack him. It's going to be difficult. And then having that Brutalizer, so the Armor Pen and cooldown reduction once again. And we see, you know, Zig just continuing to chase, pressure him right now, while Ari is going to be able to pick up that uh, blue buff. Yeah, finally, we got... We secured our own blue buff here. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin is a new. They, got, they managed to get their own blue buff. That's always a good thing. But right now, we see the stun from Tarek going down into Pixel. And we see Ari now dashing in a little Kevin. We're trying to close the gap here. But Zig is able to just keep everyone at bay. You know, we'll get that acid on someone and just keep on firing rockets. If you're going to be engaging on us, you're going to be hurting real bad. And they're actually able to deflect a 2v4 situation. But. Kevin is a noob. They're going to go ahead and grab Dragon, but look at Zion Spartan pushing down top tower. See, when you're if you're going to be pushing down a lane, if you're going to be committing to a lane, that's how you do it. You win the first tower, and then you keep going. But now we see Nintendo up in front. He is trying to pop the ult. We're going to have to go. Little Kevin it looks like be the first target. and goes really low, but the Deathmonger is also out in front. Gets stunned. Get, takes a light, quite a bit of damage, but Nintendo comes back and gets VT and trying to run away, and Deathmonger now also goes down. 
Ghost Terror, you're trying to get away. Nintendo, we may see the axe, but with Ready or is here, so is Jax. And we got the swap coming in from Urgot on the cannon, trying to get away. Can we get the stun? We get the last bit of damage we need. Yes, we do. Jax, can you get away? Oh, but the no, flash hey. from Jax, able to get him out of there. The and heal, now Zig. The heal's enough. The heal as well. Oh, the snare, able to pick up little Kevin. So they will be pushing down this tower. And now top tower has dropped from that Jax push earlier. <laughs> yeah. Mid tower, number one and number two have gone. So Kevin is a noob trying to pick up the dragon. Didn't work out for them so much. So yeah. uh, team dynamic with really aggressive pushing so far. And now they have a really strong Baron team that is always going to be a threat. When you have Olaf and Jax, they're two of the stronger champions in the game yep. as far as bruisers for taking Baron. And uh, just have a huge advantage at this point. Yeah, and also, I got to give credit where credit is due. Pixel, with that ultimate, totally saved Zion Spartan yeah. Tass in that one. If it wasn't for that heal, that Ignite surely would have finished him off. But hey, that's what a support does. I support carrying the carry. Hey, you got it. Oh, that's that's your job. That's what you're there to do. And you know, so, you know, support roles, you know, very underrated. A lot of people don't like playing it, but you still have the opportunity. You still have the capability of making big plays, such as that one, keeping your teammates alive. That is what it's all about. But now we see dynamic is in a very, very commanding spot. Tier ones and twos down in top and mid. We could take them down bottom if we really want to, and also. We see Dynamic do this a lot, go for very early barons. We could see them push the waves. We see Nintendo, he's looking to just shove top. We see the rest of the team shoving mid, and actually we got Urgot. Oh, the, we stun. Got the stun. We actually get the stun onto Ari with the red buff. Ari will have to back out of there. Zion Spartan taking a lot of damage though. The snare onto little Kevin will be able to pick up this kill. Yes. There is the leap strike, and now Sivir actually wasn't caught in Paradoxical's ultimate. The rest of the team is coming in. We have the stun on Pixel. He is going to go down. Paradoxical, can you get out of there? No. So we have Kevin is a new picking up two kills, even though it's seemed like paradoxical maybe um caught Ari out of position at the beginning yeah see now i mean i, I can understand nintendo going top to shove top while zig was down bot shoving there i'm not quite sure now in hindsight if he should have even been there because the tier one is still up i mean naturally you, you already you've already won two lanes i mean i think there's you know it's kind of you know, Come on, I well, believe in you, Nintendo. Nintendo. Go in, 4v1 no, don't, them. Don't, don't, don't go in, don't go in, don't do it. You've, you've, you've been in situations like this before, don't do it, man. Just, just back off. I don't off. think he usually runs in 4v1, but we actually, actually, this is a great <laughs> no. opportunity no, for them. No, we'll no, he's going it. We, got we actually have the Urgot swap. It was popped by Sivir, but unfortunately, the rest of the team jumping on her are able to pick up that kill very yeah. quickly. And so it did work out for them. See, yeah. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Nintendo knew what he was doing. Okay, all right. I'll 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 back off a little bit on that one. But still going, you know, still taking a step back. Not quite sure why Zig was down bot lane, trying to shove bot. We've already won two lanes, and yeah. the lane's gonna push on its so own naturally. You want to, you know, a, you know, you know, keep aggressive in lanes in which you're winning ridiculously. But here we are, Team Dynamic, doing what they do best, pressuring the Baron super early. Twenty, you know, it, and now you see all five of them are there in the pit, taking it down. Pretty quickly, you know, and, and Jack staying very high health. Yeah, and yes, and we have the we have quite a bit of sustain on Jax. He decided right. to go for the gunblade. You got the spell bam. You get the life steal, and you also have Jax's natural attack speed steroid going in, getting all the damage he need, and keeping that health super high. But the th issue is that they're so tanky right now, so having that Baron, having that regen is going to be awesome for them. But who do you focus down if you're on yeah. um, if you're on Kevin as a noob? You really you kind of just need to pick and choose targets, but they're they're all so strong. Do you get Morgana? Morgana doesn't have a zone use yet, but even so, she has the Chain Vest, and she has the Abyssal Scepter, and actually catching Red Duron won't come in for the ultimate, or will she? She does, and the burst with the Ignite does the quick kill, and actually they're chasing Lil' Kevin out of here as well. We swap. have the swap onto Sivir, and then turning onto Deathmonger for some nice damage, but Lil' Kevin does go down. They are completely wrecking him right now. Team Dynamic chasing into the fountain. We'll be able to back off here, but a quick four kills when it, it just it did, kept on was like oh they're gonna back out now there's no way they're gonna get a, oh they're gonna keep on getting these kills the <laughs> Janna ultimate for the heal and they are just going to drop these towers never mind we there's have a surrender, surrender. Kevin is a new team taking dynamic game one as the loss wow <laughs> see now we're now we're now we're crossing over again this is bad we don't need to get into these old habits okay game one team dynamic victory game two man let's go what?